Namaskaram to Uruva. <clears throat> well, the virus is taking its toll in many nations. Situation in United States is not at all looking good. The fatalities are just multiplying by the day. Spain has overtaken every other nation in terms of number of people dead. In India also, there has been a spike. In comparison, we are looking good, but the spike is not encouraging. The last two days, the kind of spike that we have seen. Fortunately, the spike is largely related to one specific group, so probably they will trace them down and control that. 
the spike is not general, which is a positive thing. But India has other kinds of problems. Already in our local area, we have listed over two thousand families which need immediate food, we are gearing up for that. Probably in another two days, we are setting up a community kitchen. Mm, supplying groceries is much easier for those who have means to cook can do. But there are many who are not even able to do that because their livelihood is on a daily basis. Those who have lands, farmers who have land, will somehow manage a little bit. But those who are vegetable sellers, flower sellers, doing menial jobs, farm labor, there's no work anywhere, so no money. So uh, we're gearing up and uh, today I'm making an appeal to everyone, we need a lot of money. In the next fifteen days, let's say, till April twentieth or maximum April twenty-fifth, till this time, we need a minimum of uh, fourteen to fifteen crores of spend is there for us. We have already kind of committed to this. Our Chinese volunteers are sending us some few lakhs of uh, masks and gloves and this and that, which is going to the health professionals and the police who are serving outside, risking everything. Well, these are challenging times. Everybody should stand up and do whatever they can do. Someone like Ratan Tata comes out and not only donates uh, 1500 crores from his personal wealth, not from the CSR, from his personal wealth, and then he says, if it is necessary, I will give my entire wealth if the nation needs it. <laughs> so, please, uh, wherever you are, in whichever way you can contribute, right now it is needed. We have dedicated volunteers, committed volunteers on the ground, but we need to fuel them with fund, otherwise they will not be effective. So, we look forward to your support. I don't want to go into the detail of work uh, schedules we are setting up. But it looks like it's... One thing is the economic virus is already coming to rural India. The virus is still not yet there too much in rural India. Hope it stays away because the economic trouble itself is hard to handle. This is a time the South Indian farmers start preparing the land. When the Tamil New Year's Day is over on 14th of April, after that, preparation of the land begins. This is very important for the next crop to happen. If that doesn't happen, then there is a serious threat of food shortages in the coming year, so we cannot afford that. In northern India, the crops have come for harvest. They're having serious trouble to harvest. In Karnataka, you might have seen the images of uh, dairy farmers spilling thousands of liters of milk because there's no way to take their milk. Thousands of liters of milk is just being poured out because uh, where to take it? I'm sure there are many people who need it. So that's where we can fill the gap, we are seeing how to connect and see where there is food and where people don't have the money to buy food. We're seeing how to connect that, it will take certain amount of work. And unfortunately, a certain amount of exposure for our volunteers. But uh, I'm sure we can handle it carefully. So at a time like this, there is no nation which is fully prepared to handle a situation like this. The richest nations in the world are trembling under the onslaught of the virus. So definitely, India, for the kind of population and the concentration of population we have, definitely we don't have a medical system and uh, 
the economics to really provide everything for everybody for months on end, no, that won't be possible. So the only way this can happen is that a cohesive action by the citizens, as a part of this... Uh, as a part of this, uh, the Prime Minister has given a call tomorrow at 9 p.m. Everybody should light a lamp or a candle or at least uh, flash your cell phone thing. Please don't do your cell phone, not here. Uh, we will... we will put up a, a big fire show because the element of fire in the Bhuta Shuddhi system of yoga and our ability to stand up as a strong life are very related. If we want to find out whether you are alive or dead, we will check whether it's warm or cold. That means whether the fire is on or gone. Everything that you call as life on this planet is only because of the fire of the sun. A fireball is burning there. Only because of that life has happened. All the other ingredients may be there, it's like cooking. Everything may be there, no fire, no cooking. So life has cooked itself up mainly because of the fire of the sun. The basic energy in the world is just that. So using fire as a way of keeping ourselves well is very much a part of the yogic system. As you can take a water shower, you can also take a fire wash which we are doing as Klesha Nasana Kriya, it's producing incredible results for people. So tomorrow, as a nation, the Prime Minister is requesting us to have a little fire around you, at least for nine minutes. You don't have to stop at nine minutes. I am advising every one of you, keep a lamp in your bedroom in a safe distance from you where you sleep and let it burn every night it'll make a world of difference for you. So, otherwise, you must have a powerfully consecrated spaces which is like fire burning all the time. Either this or that, one of the things must be done in every home. Always a lamp used to be burning, always in an Indian home. Now, unfortunately, because people are seeing it as a... Uh, an act of a particular religion, others don't want light. Otherwise, others don't want to buy a light a lamp because if you light a lamp, you may get converted. This is just stupid. <coughs> well, I think some religion may claim water, then don't have shower, don't wash your hands. <laughs> because it is part of some religion, before they pray, they wash their hands. So you don't wash your hands because if you do this, you will get converted to that religion. This is just stupid. So every doctor is saying, wash your hands. Does it mean to say he is asking you to con get convert yourself to Islam or something? Everybody washes their hands, everybody uses fire in their homes. This is most important thing is, apart from what benefit it has, the most important thing is, right now, what decides we successfully get across this situation or not, is how cohesively India acts like one person. This is the only solution for us. We don't have enough hospital beds, we don't have enough ICUs, we don't have enough ventilators. If millions of people fall sick tomorrow, we just will have to let them die. That's all the option will be. So let's not take it there, it's very important we all come together. Irrespective of your religious beliefs, political ideologies, whatever nonsense you are, Let's do one sensible thing that we stand together as one nation because right now virus is not making any distinction whether you are this religion or that religion, what is your ideology, it doesn't check. It has no ideology, no religion, it just goes for you. So let us also go for it as one. This is important. So tomorrow we will tell you what we will be doing at the yoga center. Most probably we will also live webcast it. So please watch out and be with us, we'll take that ahead. Questions? Sadhguru, this question is from Rowan. 
Sadhguru, I have read that you are only 90% recovered from exhausting your energies during Dhyalinga consecration. And... And do I look like 90%? Come on, eh? <laughs> and you need some extended time to yourself to fully recover. As the world seems to have come to a standstill, can this be a time for you to rejuvenate and get back to 100%? Well, even I thought so. Anyway, let me explain this ninety percent business. Well, post Dhyanalinga or during that process, I recklessly use my energies and my body because I had no plan to live beyond that. According to the plan, I thought after this we will leave. So did not uh, go cautiously, went all out because there was no time for caution, time was running out. We knew if we do not finish it at a, within a certain span of time, then we will miss the whole window. So we went at it and those of you who were with me in those times, you know uh, <laughs> what kind of state I got into. In a matter of uh, maybe three to four months, I must have aged about twenty-five years. Everything changed, my appearance, my everything. But since then I've been recurring. You can see I'm getting younger. From two thousand to two thousand twenty, you can see I'm much younger, much more fitter, much better, everything. So I'm... There are certain aspects which we have not taken care of. Those aspects are only important if we are doing lots of consecrations. At one time we plan a plan that we will do many consecrations across the world. Well, such things have not happened. We may do one... We had planned to do one at the end of this year, the Devi consecration in uh, United States. Now the virus has to give us permission to do it or not, we will see. So consecrations have been a challenge because of uh, certain aspects of my energy system not being put into place. Even I thought these three weeks are wonderful time for me to do something about it. From morning to night they're keeping me busy. We are shooting something throughout the day, we are doing this and that and outside activity organization is happening. Well. <laughs> There is uh, only advantage is I'm doing it with substantial social distance. That means largely either on the phone or on the video conferencing, whatever. I'm uh, largely working from under a mango tree. That is the only blessing. The mangoes are not ripe yet. They just... I'm waiting but not happening. Because... Uh, <laughs> Because almost last fifteen, twenty years, I have not been in India for a single uh, mango season. There was a time, mango season means I went on hundred percent mango diet. For one and a half to two months I ate nothing else but mangoes. Well, uh, around Mysore city, I knew, I knew every tree how the fruit tastes. When they invited me for the centennial uh, celebrations of Mysore University, I shared some of my knowledge about <laughs> the mango trees in the university gardens. Every one of them I made sure I tasted and I knew which tree is what. So... Uh... <laughs> Let me not go into that. So I'm working from under a mango tree, which is a blessing. Apart from that, time-wise, no, this is not a free time. This is a lot of activity, a lot of managing things. So, about putting back this ten percent, that would be very essential if we are going into strong consecration processes. Fortunately, in the last few years, whatever consecrations we did, a few other people stood up with me, so things went, sometimes we suffered a bit, 
when we did the Devi consecration, well, I lost my taste, sense of taste and smell for almost one and a half years, not now. Now I can smell and taste because immediately people will think I have the virus. <laughs> this was six, seven years ago. <laughs> so almost for eighteen months, everything I ate tasted like thermocol. Nothing, no taste at all, absolutely. Well, it's come back, I've recovered from that. Physically I'm well, there's no issue. But if we go into that kind of work and activity, then some challenges will come. I wish we could do that, but that kind of time is not there right now. But let's see, still there is time. Because even if India lockdown goes away, by the time we go to Europe and America, in Africa, wherever else we were suppo supposed to go, I don't think that's going to clear up in the next six weeks or more. So there is time. Let's hope we can do something. Sadhguru, this question is from Sangeet Narayanan. Namaskaram Sadhguru. You said that if we have imbibed the very essence of inner engineering program, our very presence can be transformational. Can you please explain further on this? Uh, I think a few days ago in the same one of these darshans I spoke about it, maybe didn't dwell on it. I said, Shambhavi Mahamudra is not a practice. It is like we have a Dhyanalinga temple. Somebody goes and sweeps the temple because there's no other ritual to maintain the Dhyanalinga. Somebody sweeps, somebody cleans, somebody maintains the atmosphere. That's all. Are they doing something for the Dhyanalinga? No. They're just doing something for the floor, the atmosphere, stuff like that. So once you have Shambhavi Mahamudra, this is how it is. It is a certain consecration. I've always been saying this, the easiest consecration that you can do is a living human being. It's not for nothing that human being is the peak of evolution on this planet, it's the best material you can find. But the only problem with the human being is, the day when they come for the initiation day, they're blown away and they're, you know, tears of ecstasy flowing. Uh, within a few hours or a few days, depending on who they are, they'll make a U-turn. Not everybody, but a whole lot of them. Usually, the most derogatory term that they use against me is, oh, we have to, this was wonderful, but we have to get back to normal life. This is horribly insulting. <laughs> They're saying to be peaceful, to be joyful, to be blissful is abnormal to be miserable, to be worried, to be anxious, to be a lump of nothing is normal. Very derogatory towards me. So because of these silly ideas of their normality, they will make you turns. They've invested in misery. See, it took me a long time to realize this. When it first happened to me, that I sat like this and I burst into ecstasy. I thought, this is it, I will make the whole world ecstatic. Tch, 38, 30, almost 39 years ago now. I made a plan in two and a half years' time, I will make the whole world ecstatic. Because who will not want it? There is no fool like a young fool. I was twenty-five. And I had hit a gold mine and I knew I can do this because you don't have to do nothing. If you simply sit here without messing with your mind, you will become ecstatic. So I thought, who will not want it? Such a simple thing and so fantastic. Who will not want it? Well, thirty-nine years <laughs> Slowly realizing that people have such investments in their misery, 
Even if you show them an ecstatic way to live, huh? <laughs> If they get up and walk, they want to take this cushion or even the chair with them and walk. Yes. When I initially taught the inner engineering programs, they're just wild. I'm not dressed like this, I'm in a faded denim and a t-shirt, talking wild. My language was not cultured, I could say anything. Uh, walking up and down and, you know, announce a four-day class and sometimes it goes to six days, sometimes it goes into twelve days, any which way. But they didn't understand a word that I was talking about. Even now they don't. But their lives are transformed because that's the only way it works. Nobody is getting transformed because of the words. Words are because they're so stupid, if you just make them sit here, they will go crazy. You have to tell them something. See, even a this is darshan, that means I must just sit, you must just look. <laughs> but if I just sit here, you will go crazy. <laughs> what is he doing? He's just sitting, what are we looking? <laughs> so, I have to talk. Otherwise, no need for talking. See, if I go into the villages, if I just walk in, everybody bursts into tears because they don't have much value for all these too many words. So, we have consecrated you with Shambhavi. If you live it, you don't have to advertise do in engineering, do in engineering every day to your wife, to your husband, to your children. Please, da, yenakag pannada, yoga pannada. Ah, Bama, eno ning boy on the NIT. Because they are not seeing anything. You are seeing wonderful things, but they have to see wonderful things, isn't it? When they see you, they must feel, wow, I want to be like this. If that happens, transformation happens. So, because it's a consecration, in a way, what we are trying to do is create walking temples, you know. If you build a stone temple, it's only in one place, you can't take it anywhere. Well, the Analinga, if you're willing because it's a non-physical form, it's available everywhere but that needs a certain level of receptivity. So that's why we thought we will create millions of walking temples. So when you walk, those of you who are initiated, when you walk anywhere, when you are in your home right now, you must understand you are a temple in your house, you are a temple on the street. You must walk knowing this. People will come to you in a certain way. You don't have to preach anything, you don't have to advertise, you don't have to put... Uh, have it uh, inner engineering tattooed on your forehead. None of those things are needed. You simply be truly, truly, truly that you are living constantly responding in a limitless way without any sense of boundary. In a level of your emotion, you are like a mother to the world. Don't do anything. Simply sit there, people will get transformed, not just people. Plants will respond, animals will respond, everything around you, even inanimate things will reverberate differently, one hundred percent, I'm telling you. Well, there are a lot of textbook scientists who will immediately say, oh, he's spreading pseudoscience. Well, their idea of science is rudimentary. Real scientists will never say such things because they know what they have explored is a tiny speck, what is unexplored is limitless. So, it doesn't matter who says what, if you just live with these two things, you didn't understand anything else, you just have to keep the atmosphere clean. 
See, right now there is Dhyanalinga temple, however powerful it may be, if you put filth in front of that temple, even if it's very powerful, people will not go there. You keep it in a certain way, people will go. So your practice is just that, cleaning up the place and keeping... removing the cobwebs every day, that's it. You are not doing anything to energize, it's not like Shakti Chalana Kriya, you're trying to build something, which is a long t affair. That's why we shifted to Shambhavi, because I didn't see people have neither the perseverance, nor determination, nor commitment to really work to build themselves up to another level, because that's a lot of work. Kriya Yoga is a lot of work. This is why we came to Shambhavi Mahamudra, mudra means it's already there. You just experience it, you live it, that's all. You don't have to do it, but just daily removing of cobwebs, cleaning up the floor, this is all your work, rest will happen. Next question is from Vijay Das. Namaskaram Sadhguru. In one of the quotes you said, sadhana is not the way, but without sadhana there is no way. I did not understand this. Can you please help me understanding this? No, you will understand it in the evening when I say it. Morning when the alarm rings at five o'clock, suddenly you don't understand. What is this sadhana? Because so many people said you don't have to do anything. Even Sadhguru has said many times, doing nothing is the highest thing. So why is he asking me to get up in the morning and do something? I will do nothing. <laughs> no, doing... doing nothing means you should not sleep, you should not s snore also. That is doing nothing. Sleeping is not doing nothing, you're sleeping, all right? Doing nothing means you don't sleep. You don't think, you don't feel, you don't snore, you don't do anything, simply. For this you need enormous level of awareness and alertness in the system. That's not going to happen simply. So right now it's better to do something, use some tools. Sadhana means a tool, not a practice. You're using tools. Without tools, human beings would be nothing. Really, we would be nothing without our ability to use tools. So, if you want something to come in your direction, you will have to do certain things. This happened. A very obnoxious, loud customer came and settled down in a... a reserved table in a restaurant was reserved for somebody else, but he came and sat down. He kept waving at the waiters, but they ignored him because he's sitting in the wrong table. He's marked there, it's reserved, but he sits there. Then loudly he yelled, if I have to get some water in this damn place, what should I do? So the manager walked up to him and said, why don't you set fire to yourself, then it will come. If you set fire to yourself, water will come in lot of quantity, not just in a glass. So sadhana is just like that, you're trying to set fire to yourself so that you can draw something towards you. It's a tool, not only to... for health and well-being, it's a tool to draw a dimension which is not yet right now. Next... next question is from Jisha, Bangalore. How to make the mind to work for us and how to fully get rid of its debilitating subconscious programming? Whose mind is she talking about? <laughs> no, no, when people... people are looking at how to have their husband's mind work for them, how to make their wife's emotion work for them. Yes, yes, it's not a joke. See, <laughs> at a time like this, I must be just giving you solace. Don't worry, I'm with you, everything okay. <laughs> no, 
But what to do, I am not that kind. I am a realistic fool, that's the problem with me. You can be a realistic fool or an unrealistic fool, that's all the option you have. If you think you are smart, you are a bloody fool. So I'm a realistic fool, I'm not an unrealistic fool. So realistic fool means this, we are always looking what's the right thing to do in a given situation. We are not expecting Superman, Spider-Man drop upon us and do something for us. There you see all these snakes hanging here, not able to do anything for us, they just hang there. We just enjoy them as they are. We don't expect they come and ri raise your kundalini. No, no, there are people like that. If you keep them here, like this one big snake, then they would think, oh, this snake, if I look at it and worship it, this will come and raise in me as kundalini. That's why we hung them there in chains. So, you want to... your... you've still not made it clear to me whose mind you want to control. Because generally this is the thing, this is what we call as family, this is what we call as society. That means your mind should work for me. Mine is not working for me, that's not the problem. <laughs> your mind should be working for me, you must think the way I want you to think. You must feel the way I want you to feel. I am not feeling like that, that is not the problem. You must feel for me. Tch. See, when you say you must love me, you must have love for me, means what? That means I want your emotions to be the way I want. No, no, no. You can only decide about this one. How my emotions can be, how my thoughts can be, I can decide. I have no business to decide how somebody else's thought and emotion should be. But always the concern is this, but I'm sure Disha is a wonderful girl and she's asking about her mind, how to have control over my mind. First you must decide whether you want to control your mind or liberate your mind. Please consider this. All of you who are always thinking of controlling your mind, first make up your mind. Do you want this control? Do you want this liberated? Oh, then I'll go mad. Who said you are not right now? <laughs> Do you have a certificate like that? This happened in Bangalore city. There's a young boy, say, sixteen, seventeen year old boy. He went into some psychological problems. Those days when I was young, those days, uh, there is no sensitivity about these things. Somebody is little psychologically disturbing, so immediately say, hey, he's mad. So he went to the Nimhans Institute in Bangalore. He became an inpatient for some three months or four months, and then he came back. In the evening, he, where all the young boys gather, uh, he also went there. Then everybody, I, you're mad, aren't you? You're, a, you're a gone, you're a loony. Because you've been in the mental hospital for four months, you've finished, whatever. The boy was hurt but he didn't know what to do. Two, three days he went there, every day they were battering him with this. So one day he pulled out a paper from his pocket and he said, See, here I have a certificate that now I'm normal, do you have one? The hospital gave him a certificate that now he is normal, he is fit to go back. Do any of you have? You don't have. I am the one who has a certificate, who is sane, who is insane now? So, first thing is, Disha and everybody else, just consider this one question profoundly in the next twenty-four hours. Do you want your mind in control? Or do you want it liberated? Maybe tomorrow we'll explore that. Yoga, yoga, yogeshwaraya. Oh.
भूत भूत भूतेश्वराय काल काल कालेश्वराय शिव शिव सर्वेश्वराय शंभ शंभ 